Buffalo Valley ecosystem. This is our first, I think, is this our first actual LFG, LFG stream, Paul? Oh, you guys, you guys can't hear it. We actually, we have good Paul in the background as well. Um, so, so he is in fact still real and came along with us. And um, we're getting ready to uh, kick off some pretty cool stuff with the, uh, the Valley ecosystem. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Doing great. How are you guys doing? It is, it is two in the morning here in, uh, in Asia. And I, uh, I stayed up extra, extra late just to actually to be fair. I did take a nap because I woke up at four this morning. It was, it was one of those days, but, um, I, uh, I have, am up here bright and squirrely in the early dawn to, uh, to chat with you guys. I feel like every time, um, you're on an AMA, you have just gone through like 14 hours of travel and like one hour of sleep in the last week. Dude, dude, like, like last, last week coming back from token was, I think the tiredest I've ever been because I spent prior, prior to token, I was in, um, I was on, uh, well, there's KBW, and then I was on Necker Island for Isle AI, which was this really, really, really small uh, AI conference on on Richard Branson's island um, in the Caribbean, which was super cool. And Richard is like the, I guess, Sir Richard, I should probably call him, given that he's a knight and all of that. Um, he's probably one of the coolest people I think I've ever freaking met. He is so nice, so chill, um, really, really Neat. but uh wow. the unfortunate thing about the caribbean is it happens to be on the exact total actual freaking other side of the planet from singapore um and so i had to do like the whole planes trains and automobiles thing except no no trains boats instead to get from necker to uh, uh tortola then miami then doha then singapore it was 35 hours of travel. It was a it was a total freaking nightmare. Um, and then I, I I got to my hotel in Singapore at like 10 o'clock in the morning, which of course is way too early to check in. And you know how when you travel, like if you travel for a long time, you just kind of get like travel ick, like everything you just gross, you just feel awful. And, you know, I'm sitting downstairs at my my hotel, just waiting for a room to open up, just hating everything. And Sebastian from the Sandbox shows up. He's like, hey, Jason. I'm like, you stay away from me. I'm gross. Leave me alone. Um, it was it was absolutely next level, insane, crazy. But it was, it was an amazing experience. And I'm so glad to be uh, back in in you know a time zone that works well and isn't going to be changing eight times over the next two weeks man that sounds really cool though guaranteed he consumed energy during said rate of about 0.3 per hour during the whole 36 whatever hour 0.3 per hour what do you what do you think this is 0.3 per hour Dude, that's that's like that's over three hours per energy drink. That's 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 only that's only that's slightly little, less, less than eight hours, eight hours or, or eight energy drinks per twenty four hour period. That's that those are key numbers. We got to push those numbers up. Your cool. cardiologist thinks you for your business. Yeah, right. So, Johnny, tell me tell me a little bit uh, more about what you guys are doing. Now, you and I had the the, the privilege of meeting in person. And when I hosted a little tiny gala get together there uh, a, a couple years back, and you, uh, for do you mind if I kind of dox you a little bit? Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he, Johnny is known as uh, Happy Valley Beacon in Discord. Everybody has seen him there. Um, there is a little itty bitty town in New York called Beacon. He has a bar arcade uh there called um happy valley it is one of the coolest places i think i've ever been we had a great community get together we had a bunch of people come from new york um i mean i, I when i when i learned that uh that you know he was there and i was in new york for nft nyc i think i don't know i don't know what i was doing there 
think you were like training uh, people, you said, for something. Oh, that's right. It was that 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 HR uh, thing, giant air quotes. And uh, yeah, yeah, it came there to to see the the setup, check out the location, and it was super freaking cool. Um, and so now, fast forward a few years, Johnny has been working on doing some really cool um, cabinet based um, sort of games to sort of bring blockchain gaming to you, you know almost retroing it a little bit, which is this beautiful. A uh, beautiful mixture of uh, retro and and new with the, the blockchain and Web three elements. I think it's totally cool. Can you can you tell them a little bit more about what you got going on, man? Yeah, totally. And and I really appreciate it. Thank you for the the kind words um, for for our space. We we love it. Um, we uh, Beacon is is really cool, and they've been great to us. We're like right in the middle of Main Street here, and we try to do like fifteen events in a month. But anyways. So Valley Ecosystem, um, <clears throat> it's been in our brains kind of swirling around for probably two, three years now. And then about a year ago, we decided we needed to do this because someone else is going to if we didn't. It all kind of spawned from when we saw our you know younger patrons, like 21 to like 25, they were gravitating more towards the handful of newer indie arcade cabinets that we had. Um, there's an awesome game called Kung Fu Kickball, Black Emperor um and and a couple others and we were doing some metrics and seeing like man these games were being played you know way more than like pac-man or nba jam um about the same level as uh like ddr and pinballs which pinballs they're having a, like a renaissance right now um so th we noticed that like a, like two years ago and we were like ah we got to make our own indie arcade game how cool would that be so we started talking to all these developers um you know i've been dabbling in crypto since for, for probably six years now. Um, so that was kind of going in tandem in my brain. And then it kind of clicked one day thinking, well, why don't we have our own Web3 arcade cabinets? We put the games that we're developing, make them all arcade-based high score leaderboards, um, and then develop an ecosystem with a smart contract. And people can come in and try to get a little bit of that, um, you know, glory of the of the 80s and 90s really like late 70s through mid 80s when it was really big um, where people are playing and they're waiting in line and they're it's a global leaderboard and they're actually earning um let's try to make that happen so we spent the better part of the last year um doing just that and it has been the most like humbling and exciting experience of my life so far we everyone that we talk to um is just like yes how can we make this happen so we we linked up with um, Fun Company, uh, and they make the best arcade cabinets. Um, honestly, wasn't even sure if we were going to get in the door. Um, they make cabinets for like Sega and Bandai Namco. Um, if you go to Dave and Buster's or Round One, most of the games that are there are made by them. But they have a small indie section, and so we kind of pitched our idea, um, and they just said I, there must have been like one guy or girl there who was into crypto, and they were just like, "Yeah, all right, we'll do this." Um, so that was awesome. The, the cabinets are going to be beautiful, like top of the line, uh, but we are going to make them in like indie retro style. So it won't look like, you know, the new, um, Jurassic park game that like you sit in and it's huge. It'll look like Pac-Man, but no. Um, and actually ours is going to have a little UFO on top just to, to be special. Um, but yeah, so then we started developing games, our lead developer, Sharish, who I, is probably in the chat right now. Um, and I have been working. Then we brought on a couple other developers. We have a small, like, nimble team right now. There's less than 10 of us. There's nine of us now. Um, and we've been working for for a year building these games. The most exciting thing, I, not the most exciting thing, but one of the most exciting things that um, I think a lot of people don't realize is that we're a publisher as well. Uh, we have been talking to the, about a dozen games that we're going to onboard here really soon, probably Q1 of 2025, we hope to have 100 games um, later in, in 2025 uh, from just third party titles. And then our first party titles will, uh, will obviously be on there as well. But that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. That is super cool, man. I mean, 
one of the things that I, I love about what you're doing is, um, and, and actually, you know what, before I say what I, what I like, let me, let me hear it from you first. What is sort of your ethos in terms of onboarding third party titles? Yeah, that is a great question. Cause that was the most important thing, um, in the beginning for us. Cause you know, <laughs> it kind of goes back to, we hear from people in the arcade every day and they have a lot of opinions, like a lot of opinions, um, which is great. Um, G- gamers, that's weird, man, because gamers never have opinions, right? They don't, they don't share their thoughts or concerns about anything, especially, especially when you intersect that with Web three. There's, there's almost no opinions at all. They're, they're quiet, meek, and retiring group. That's yeah. Everybody just knows that, right? That's. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. You definitely, you definitely know probably way more than I do. But I, you know, it's the face to face. I'll get like, hey, Johnny, did you know that? Um, the new Elton John pinball game that you got, like I took my measuring tape out, you know, and it's a Saturday night and we're, and we're packed and I, and, and I measured it and it's like 0.01 millimeters off. And I'm like, I did not know that, but like, thank you. And then they'll be like, so you got to fix that right now. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I can right now, but we'll, we'll get to, we'll add it to the list. Um, and that, that is, that is the IRL equivalent of please can't the devs do something. Yeah. Why is your game broken? Yeah. Totally. I um, love it. So we knew right away, we were like, all right, how can we do this without pissing off, to be blunt, um, the Web2 people? Uh, and it was just, let's make it as seamless as possible. So we decided that, um, you know, the all the Valley games will be free to play. For third party titles, we're, we're, um, it'll probably be up to the third party uh, if they want to be free or not, but all of our Valley titles will be free to play. Um, we will not have any pay to win aspects. Uh, I think there's definitely a space for that. Um, you know, especially like bigger, like MMORPGs where you have like in-game, econ- in-game economies. I think that's really cool. Um, but for arcade style games, yeah, for, um, for arcade, yeah. that's a whole different thing. I mean, other, other than insert quarter to try again, I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, kind of, kind of the limit of that. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. People would not be happy. And, uh, you know, that's not the way we wanted to go with it. So there's going to be no pay to win aspects. Um, all NFTs would be cosmetic in nature only. And, uh, every game, um, whether it's first or third party is going to have Valley as its, um, reward token. Um, and again, like, I know that that's hard to do when you have a lot of games that, um, are not arcade style, but it's kind of perfect for arcade style games. You know, we've done a lot of research on this and, um, we, we believe that, you know, if we have hundreds of titles, which we are not only like planning on, but it, 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 it's going to happen unless, you know, something unforeseen happens. But anyways, um, if you just have a couple of those as hits, like that's all you need. Um, so we're going to have all of the games earning in Valley. Um, every uh, time that you go to the arcade to play a game, you put in a quarter or it's free to play or it's a card system, how that's up to the venue operators. Um, and from what we've talked to you, they're all going to do it a little bit differently. That's fine. You're, you have a transaction, an address that is created upon pressing the start button. Um, and that's a really cool thing that our, our devs have, have worked out, which is awesome. Um, so a web two person comes in, they play, you know, alien influencer at our Valley cabinet. They put, they start playing. They're already connected to the blockchain. Um, they see that they are potentially earning something. They might not even understand what it is. Um, and then at the end, the psychology of them seeing that they have this token, uh, they're, it, it's been like very powerful from some tests that then they want to keep it. So you might have someone who's like total aversion to Web3, um, but they go in and unbeknownst to them, they're playing and earning something. And then all they have to do is put in their email and then they've created an account. They're on, they're, you know, on the blockchain and they have Valley token already. That's how we're onboarding them. And that's how we made it as seamless as possible. Um, of course, there's going to be like many of us in here who who know exactly what's going on and uh, and that's not an issue, but I think to onboard those Web2 people, that was important to us. Yeah, onboarding onboarding Web2 is is hypercritical. Um, it, with, with this, you know, maybe I shouldn't get into the, the nitty gritty details or the weeds here, but, you know, return plays, is there like a, QR code that they can scan to tap to log in to resume your session or, or some sort of 
yeah. some sort of thing. If, that, if, if that's not a question you can answer, that's totally fine. Tell me. No, 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 that's great. Um, that's a great question. So that that's what uh, that Sharish and all of our devs are building out right now is the platform um, uh, in the cabinet. That will be the same, um, more or less the same for online. And there'll be multiple ways to log in, uh, QR code, right. you know, email. There's never going to be like you put in your seed phrase or anything like that in the cabinet because, you know, who wants to mess with that? <laughs> come on, come on. I, I can't, I do the pain of, of, of choosing three characters when you via magic place on a uh, leaderboard, which wow. by the way, I don't think I've ever done in an arcade game ever. Oh yeah. Ever. I've been terrible, um, terrible at arcade games. I, but, yeah. I am really bad at every arcade game. We have a high score leaderboard, uh, just, you know, it's like up and you win a free beer if you get on it. Uh, I am never made the top 10 on any of them except Frogger. I'm number one. That's my that's my one game. That's it for whatever reason. That's uh, that's something to aspire to, sir. Yeah. Something to aspire to. That is respectable. That is respectable. And speaking of Frogger, I mean, so Frogger Frogger is your one game. Uh, Neff, what's, what's your game? What do you play, man? I like the old Jurassic Park. Ooh. You know the Jurassic Park where you sat there, you had to shoot T Rex. Um, played the heck out of Battle Toads. And there's a uh, the Star Wars, which which is the Star Wars one that has the three Battle levels. Pod? That maybe it's got a Hoth level and an indoor level. I've only seen it in two different places, and it was so cool. And I reportedly one of them took it out because it was expensive to maintain or something. But it's, it's like I'm looking it up right now. I want to say it's like trilogy or stuff. Mm, I think what what is that what is that top down airplane one where you're flying? It's like something 1944 or something like that. Um yeah, uh shoot. 1984. But yeah, that one's great. Yeah, this, so the, for me it's either that one or Gauntlet. Like the old school Gauntlet. Nice. Yeah, the old school Gauntlet's great. We have Gauntlet Legends, and that that's a quarter beater. Um, we also have that the Jurassic Park gun game, which sadly just broke, so that's down right now. And the only part in the galaxy is like it takes like a year to get here. But um, yeah, that yeah that that uh, 1971 maybe. No, maybe. So something like that. Where you're you're I think yeah, it's probably seventy something because you're fighting helicopters and you know giant flying airships and. And shit like that. Yeah, that one's great. We're Team we're Cranebot. Looking. Team Cranebot says Simpsons. Fun fact: that's the only arcade that I've actually beat the entire thing. I just I don't know how many twenty bucks, or whatever, but with a couple friends, just put it in and beat the whole thing, and that was it. It's the only one I've fully beaten. Yeah, all those. Uh... I mean, it, that's a commitment, right? Like like beating an arcade game is a significant commitment. Ooh, subspace just DM'd me. Time pilot. Time pilot. Yes, there is another game that's like nineteen something though. But time pilot. Yeah, is the that, one I'm of. yeah. Time pilot is is definitely yeah. the one I was thinking of. Yeah, that you were thinking of. Um, yeah, Simpsons and all those like Konami beat 'em up games. I think it's Simpsons, X Men, and um, of course the other one, uh, Turtles and Turtles in Time. Those those are all Konami, and those those do really well. They still do well. Yeah, and we actually, you know, I, you know, can't show any of the third-party titles that we're that we're talking to just yet. But we've got an awesome um, beat 'em up side scroller in that same vein, and the high score leaderboard is like somewhat going to be based off of um, your combo, which is really cool. Also with like uh, some other functions, but that that's a cool one. And then we have a really cool, um, uh, similar to like Time Pilot game um, that we're talking to. Um, and it's just it's. It's been so cool to like even just like test out all these games. Um, I, mean, not I think there's a there's a potential future as well in terms of you know talking to some of these apps that have been built for for phones that would be fairly easily ported over to cabinets. I think honestly, yeah, yeah, because our our whole goal here is um, you know with the publishing side of things, making it also as seamless as possible. Uh, you know, I think I think that's like kind of my job, and our devs have been phenomenal at this. Is like whatever we want to implement, I'll say how can we make this as seamless as possible, and then they'll make it awesome, and I'll be like, can we get this a little bit more intuitive, and then they'll just they'll do it. So like, 
I think that's kind of the key because for the last couple of years, um, you know, most people in this project in this space, Web3 space, kind of realize like that's one of the biggest barometers is onboarding and like mm -hmm. you know, to crypto, you know, is for some reasons uh, people just don't understand it or, you know, they're looking at the scams, which do exist, um, I feel like less and less. Uh, but I think it's it's the onboarding process is, is the number one thing. It's like sometimes I'll talk to like a friend or and they'll say, yeah, OK, I'll do it. And then they're like, but wait, how do I I have to log in with a wallet? uh with seed phrase yeah. and, sort of, and so that um that's what we focused on first and we think we we nailed it so we'll see so you guys you guys have a node that is going to be released for this now you and i have brainstormed about how this is going to work but i don't know exactly what you landed on because i've been you know running all over the freaking planet doing crazy stuff um what 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 is the the model that you have going for that uh in terms of the workload it's going to start off really light it's going to be like the global high score leaderboard tracker on the blockchain um and then eventually we do want that to to run the games as well which the games will all be somewhat light um so that that'll be that'll be really cool and then in terms of the like kind of details for the node sale um so yeah actually it starts here in less than 40 minutes for the whitelist um, you know, we were kind of selective and like didn't do a bunch of whitelist promotion um, for it's like a little strategic there. Um, but we've got some like 4 p.m. Eastern time until um, there's, it's almost a six hour window. So you, once the whitelist starts in 38 minutes, it'll be five hours and 50 minutes. And then after that, it'll be the public sale, um, which starts 10 p.m. Eastern time. So you can do the uh, conversion. Um, they'll start at three hundred dollars, um, and they if, if you have the whitelist, it's ten percent discount. Also, really important to us is we wanted to, to try like a really unique referral system here. So um, I think it was in one of the LFG meetings, um, and I was talking to um, a couple, I was talking to a couple uh, content creators and um, saying, hey, what do you think about like for every twenty nodes? that um, you refer, you get a free Valley node. Um, and then we're talking to LFG, we're like, what about 10? And then I, I forget who it was, it might've been Elijah. And he was like, what about five? Um, so <laughs> so yeah, let's do it. Let's try it out. Um, so that's what we're going with. The first five referred, you get a Valley node yourself. Um, and then it nice. for the next 10 and then the next 15 and then the next 20 and then it stays at, at 20 forever so then if you're nice out for community members um that it, it, it's attainable you know i think for anyone to to get that first five and then it's also good for you know if you're a content creator if you wanted to as well um yeah nice that's uh that's fantastic i think i think that this is you're you're using our uh our referral tech right for this we are yes yeah awesome great awesome. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. It's, it's pretty seamless. Um, do you want to, do you want to share the, uh, the URL here so people know where to go? Yeah, man. Um, let's see. Node.valleyecosystem.com. But make sure you use a referral code because that 5% in public sale comes from the referral code. Nice. Really cool thing that I don't think we've talked about or talked about much is that the, um, the nodes themselves will also grant, well, first off, they become NFTs immediately upon purchase, which is awesome. Good job. That that's really cool. We, we love that. Um, you, 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 you didn't, you didn't weren't a fan of the, 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 the four year NFT, uh, node to NFT timeline. No, you know, no. um, we do it that way. But we, we went with the instant. Yeah. Um, no, no Good that's call. great. Good call. Yeah. Um, and then uh, there is a 90 day locking period on that. Um, so okay. there's 90 days uh, before you can, you know, trade if you choose so. Um, but you'll, you will see it in your wallet immediately as an NFT, which is awesome. Um, and then in terms of, um, I forget where I was going with that, the NFT. Oh, yes. So another cool thing is that um, the NFT will give you uh, a license to build your own DIY cabinet if you so choose. Ooh. 
Yes. And this one was something that we kind of added as we were talking to a lot of different people. What that means is that we are going to have, you know, our physical upright cabinets that will be for businesses. Um, you can purchase those as, as an individual as well um, from Fun Company when those become available. And we are pushing to get those available as soon as possible. Um, the only downside with working with like the top tier cabinet designers is they have, oh, there you go is that they have um, you know tons of orders coming through um, but we're still looking for end of October for that um, and what you can purchase those the ones that would be sold to the venues um, we're looking at like a five thousand dollar price point which is in line with um, newer indie cabinets um, those cabinets that you'd play at the venue you would earn at a higher rate um, and that's that was key for us because we wanted to be like, what's the reason that you would go to the arcade? Um, if you're earning on the higher rate through the cabinets from the global leaderboard there, that's how we think we can, we can um, attract people to come in and get some like fervor back and like excitement um, to the actual arcades. That being said, you can still play and earn at home as well. Um, but that's kind of why I brought up that the nodes, node owners have a license one per node um to potentially build your own um cabinet the cost for building that cabinet would be on you um but you do have the license so that if you say built your own diy cabinet and customize it however you want that would also um, earn at the uh, the higher rate the same rate that that it does at the arcade so that's like a cool thing that that we uh we wanted to, to tell everyone about at some point in time i think we need to have a cabinet competition I would love to see what kind of wacky ass cabinets people create. Yeah. I have always wanted since I was like 13 or 14, I've always wanted to build a massive, insane steampunk style arcade cabinet. I have a Pinterest of like, this is from like 15 years of all these crazy arcade. Uh -huh. cabinets. I'll have to send it to you. Yeah. That's uh, steampunk would be cool. Um, now, I, I know I, I purchased several cabinets from you guys for, for placement in various places. Where are those going? Do we know where those are going yet? We do not, but we are thinking one will be in um, Singapore, one will be in Dubai, one will be in Vancouver, and one will potentially be in Jason's house. <laughs> but that's that one, that's up to you. Um, you know, I would love that. I would yeah. love that. I do have a office in my house it's it's pretty cool it nice. needs a cabinet nice yeah we we uh we also did a um or, or i did a like whirlwind tour of i was trying to go to 12 venues i think i made nine uh just in new york city this was like a week or two ago um i ended up walking over eight and a half miles which i was i'm not i don't do that normally not even close um but met with like 14 different venue owners and managers um they were like so excited, most of them, about this idea, um, which I kind of thought I would be like kind of having to sell a little bit to them. And I, you know, we, they were like, please tell us about this because, you know, arcade venue owners, um, whether it's a bar, a gaming lounge, what have you, they want to try the new thing to bring people in um, because right. it, it's just, it just makes sense for them. And so it, I, did, I didn't even have to sell it. They were like, give me the card. Like when, whenever this goes live, like send it to us, we're, we're going to do this. Um, really cool thing where we partnered up, which is something I can talk about, um, with a brewery, uh, KCBC brewery, which they're an awesome brewery in New York city and their cans designs are really cool. Just check them out. KCBC. Um, they're going to make a beer for flutter, which is one of our games as well as a beer for, um, alien influencer. And it will be branded and wrapped so I'll, I'll definitely send you guys some of those but that's awesome and we're going to try to have um each uh, bar that has one of these cabinets to to carry those as well nice nice um, that sounds absolutely fantastic man um let's see uh, how, how can people a uh, part of the uh the community here the valley ecosystem community yeah so our discord would be the best way um, you know, we also are on, on Twitter, um, you know, we have put some things up on YouTube. Um, but I would say get into our discord. 
Uh, you can purchase a node, of course, and that starts here in 30 minutes. Um, that, that would be kind of the most direct way to participate. But um, we also have a tournament called Flutter, sorry, a game called Flutter that we're running a tournament for, free to play on um, mobile, PC, and Mac, no download required. Um, and you can start playing that right now. We've got it going for one, two, three, four more days. So you've got a little bit of time left on that. And that was really like your first opportunity to earn Valley if you can place on the top 50. It's been awesome to watch everyone in our Discord. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not I'm not anywhere near accomplished or talented enough to place it, well, really, honestly, anywhere. I think I have the personal record for lowest score on Flutter. I think my score was <laughs> nine. That's right. Um, I think someone got zero. Oh, well. Which I, I didn't think was possible. That's, that's, that's magical. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's that's freaking that's it, it's a it's a fun game. It's a fun game, and I really want to play the uh, the UFO one. I've I've seen that. That looks really cool. I'd love to to get it on that one of these days. Yeah, we are. Um, we're, that's gonna be really cool game, and we're we're our developers are putting in so much time. And that the next time we we show that off, I think people are gonna be really happy. Um, it's gonna feel and look quite different, and um, I'm super excited. Yeah. Oh, sorry. One Let, other thing I, I just yeah, forgot is when you asked about how they can be involved, um, we're going to have Discord games that go live that are our um, lead developers mm -hmm. been creating, and you'll actually be able to earn Valley playing those Discord games. So we're trying to have a you know make it as fun and light and easy to, to be involved as possible. Now, now, crazy idea. Have you considered Telegram tappers? Just just checking, <laughs> checking. <laughs> If it's a thing that you wanted to look at, I could um, kind of so see I, Flutter working on Telegram, right? Just press. Dude, the, it actually, it actually would. It could. It actually, it, it would actually work. work. No, I, 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 I give, I give people shit about that one, but, but there is definitely a space in the, in the industry for those. I just know that they're, uh, I've seen some fun, fun, fun memes lately. Let's put it yeah. that way. Um, you know what? I, I think. I think uh, you're right. It's kind of amazing, like how fast they've caught on, and they're, they're yeah. like ubiquitous. Uh, whatever, whoever yeah. thought of that, like they cracked the code. Um, I don't. Yeah, uh, there's it, there's more coming. I've, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty, uh, uh, and I don't mean more coming in terms of the the, the Gala ecosystem or anything like that. I mean I'm, I'm sure that there are, but I'm, I don't mean that. Um, I spent a lot of time in Singapore talking to a lot of. Uh, game developers and ecosystems and things like that. And there are more telegram and telegram like things coming that are uh, new, new platforms for, for games like that. So I think the gaming is actually going to be changing here a little bit more in the near future. I mean, that, that is a good point. Like, could we port flutter like a fairly simple game? Um, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll 100%. I'll, yeah. All right. That's, that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. 100%. Um, now, I want to, uh, so we, we've got about a little bit more than 10 minutes, um, you know, until until uh, the time runs out. Um, but I wanted to kind of open the floor a little bit to uh, the community for questions um, on the Valley ecosystem. Excuse me. Um, questions on the Valley ecosystem. You know, what, what are people saying in Discord? I'm unfortunately on my phone, so I can't see shit. Um, so I'm going to be depending on uh, Neff and uh, Good Paul to uh, flag any any things that are coming through the the, the chat so they can uh, be kicked around here. And this is primarily Johnny's show here. I'm not going to be answering questions unless you know there's something that directly requires me to you know get involved. So what do we got? Let me scroll up through Discord and see. I'm, I'm looking for the first time right now as well. Let's see here. Um, is there a limit on how many nodes they can buy at once? Sure, um, said 100. Is that? Can we verify 100. that? 100. Yep, that is correct. Yeah, and that you that is bonkers and get 100 at a time. Yeah, yeah, we we really <laughs> decided uh, to do that. Um, that was a for decentralization purposes. You know, we didn't want anyone to have more than one percent. Um, of of the available nodes, which would which is is uh, ten thousand. So um, you know, decentralization was really kind of the key for every decision that we made. 
um, and that that's part of that. Yeah, and that's why we did that's why we didn't um, we did a, a fair fair mint is that what it's called uh, where we didn't mint any tokens for the Valley team. Um, mm -hmm. That was also a, a decentralization play. So we're trying. Right. You know, our, our business is based in um, New York, which for a crypto company that this might be getting too into things, but whatever, um, <laughs> is very unlikely or very um, unusual. Run away! Run away! We we kind of leaned into it a little bit. We were like, well, let's just do everything a hundred percent by the books as possible. Um, yeah. And it's been nice. It's like been nice to have that limit. It's kind of like a, kind of like a an artist who like limits mm -hmm. their tool set. So then it it kind of focuses you. Um, but the good thing for everyone is like you know like we're gonna be doing things as decentralized and, and by the book as possible. Um, and and just as a, a sorry, uh, uh, just as a quick comment for people because I'm sure there's somebody, even if they're not typing it in the chat, which they very well could be, they're thinking like a hundred nodes, like that's ridiculous. Um, there are companies out there that their entire job is putting cabinets in places and they would need many of these things to be able to to do that effectively um so you know that's one thing to keep in mind there with that this yeah. is not you know you just running a vps with a bunch of shit on it you're actually you know hopefully at the end of the day going to be doing these things and deploying them you know all over the world a hundred percent talking about that there is a question the node license gives you the, uh, the, the, the node gives you the license to build a cabinet, right? Uh, any chance of having like mini cabinets or are there different types of models, like full standing, tabletop, different types of models for? Great question. Yeah, so um, for the node owners, if you decide to build your own cabinet, you can go nuts. You can build whatever you'd like. Um, that could be, you know, a tabletop, that could be a cabinet that's the size of a house, go crazy. Um, for the uh, official Valley cabinets that will be, you know, marketing to, uh, it'll be B2B, but, you know, it could, a consumer can 100% purchase these as well. We're starting off with our full upright Valley cabinet, and that's the one that'll be priced around $5,000. Um, we are also talking to Fun Company about a, um, a tabletop version. Um, so that one would be, uh, still have the, um, you know, same earning uh, as, the, as the upright, but it would be smaller footprint um you know easier to transport if that's something you chose to do and uh and be and be more affordable um than the in the upright so that but that won't come until after the upright cabinet it needs to be like a we need a shower model one that you can like yeah. sink in your shower and display you know as your a touch screen that's uh that's that's exactly i mean what if, we're, if we're if we're gonna do that neff i mean we also need to have a built-in you know cup holder so you can put your shower gear in there while you play your <laughs> arcade games i mean or your monster you just put your yeah yeah, yeah. i mean this is not i'm not a savage i don't, I don't bring a monster, monster in the shower in the shower okay okay just making sure just yeah. making sure i mean we do have a a certain limit you know baseline that you have to maintain, you know, we establish not 0.3 per hour. So yeah, no, it's way more than that. It's, yeah. Um, uh, so I think that's question. really cool. Ahead. Actually, last thing on that is um, when, so gaming lounges, which are, have been popular in Asia for a while, um, you know, and we think that, that these um, cabinets will, will do really well in Asia. Um, in, in New York, they have been popping up everywhere in the city, um, in the last like one to three years. And then now I'm starting to see them like going all throughout the U S so, um, you know, gaming lounges where it's like a bunch of PCs and people are playing like esports in there, but each one of those gaming lounges typically has like one to five physical cabinets. Um, and those owners have been like the most receptive to, to this. Cause I think it kind of ticks off that, um, you know, tournament high score leaderboard. Um, they're maybe a little bit more um, understanding of the crypto element as well. And their patrons are really into it. So that I, you know, we could, we could have more Valley cabinets in gaming lounges potentially than any other, you know, like family entertainment centers or arcade bars, um, movie theaters, bowling alleys, things like that. Um, where, you know, Jason, you were asking earlier about where the four cabinets that, that, that LFG had purchased initially um, and those we were thinking Vancouver, um, you know, Singapore, Dubai, and, uh, and your, your place. Um, but, uh, and then that you know, can be for wherever you'd like to take it. 
Um, but for uh, we also have four locations, um, you know, Happy Valley Arcade Bar, which is the arcade bar that my wife and I own um, in Beacon, New York, as well as um, uh, a movie theater arcade bar in Hudson, New York, which it's going to be going into um, a really cool indie arcade bar in um, uh, Bushwick in Brooklyn, and then another one that will probably be in, in Connecticut by early next year. Um, but then once the once the sale of the cabinets goes live, that's when you know we you know we can't say for sure, but we, we think we're gonna get like a huge influx on, on day one of those when that happens in, in a month or so for those physical cabinets. And for gaming lounges, if we have you know the, the um, tabletop version, we're gonna we're gonna focus on saying, hey, buy 10 of these tabletops cabinets. Um, mm. so that's when those node licenses, like you'll you'll really see, well, you know, why we we have um, the number that we have. Nice, nice. I I love that. I love that idea. I have another question. Maybe without getting maybe too into the weeds, um, subspace asked because these are online games. Is there any issue with latency? Any any ways you've had to solve that specifically? And will there be multiplayer games? I know the answer to that second part, but if maybe you want to elaborate. Definitely multiplayer games. Um, you know, this I, I'm not a developer, so I, uh, our our lead dev Sharish could probably answer this better than I can. But from um, how I understand it, is the only connection would be um, at the uh, at the beginning. There's no latency because the games aren't like running on online. Um, that's that's how I've been it's been explained to me. So yeah, don't have to worry about latency. Awesome. Good to hear. Um, going through chat. If anybody has any other questions, drop them in chat. Um, and Good Paul, do we happen to be seeing anything coming across Restream on that? By the way, anything from YouTube or Twitch or? Okay, excellent. Uh, this in. You guys can't hear Good Paul. We need to have like a allow Good Paul to speak button so that when. We ask a question, he can, you know, come over the top of things. I think that's important. I still think it has to be on our end. It. He can't do it on his end. He controls everything else. We have to be like, yes, we all consent to you speaking now, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> so of hands. Um, <laughs> awesome. Well, dude, I'm super excited about what you have going on here. I know that uh, it's been a it's been a long time coming. You've been working really hard. You've been looking at you know all sorts of technical solutions i know you guys have been looking at uh you know at the as as you know important parts of the gala ecosystem for a long time you've been looking at you know gala chain and and you know great community and all of that but what you guys have are creating and have created in fact i think is 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 really cool really unique and uh you know, generally speaking, just a very special thing in, in the Web 2 or, or Web 3 worlds, which, by the way, I tweeted about this earlier today. And, uh, you know, the, the, the inestimable, inestimable uh, Jesus Martinez agreed with me on this. Um, I think we just go straight to Web 5. Web 2 plus 3 is 5. So we're just we're just going straight to Web 5 now, guys. Um, so this is a great Web 5 uh, solution. And um, I, I can't wait to see it, uh, see it out there, and to, to play one of these things in person. Oh, I, I really appreciate the kind words, Jason. Yeah, we have been working so hard. Um, it's been like humbling to see how many people. Um, you know, I was talking to the developer of Cubert, and and he's like, "Let me know when you get your platform up, and we can try to get Cubert on this." And it's just like, it's just, it's just crazy um how how so many people have been into the idea i think for most people it's just like a, a global leaderboard um mm -hmm. with arcade style games it's just like harkens back to a lot of people's you know memories of that and um that's that's what we're trying to do here and i think uh i think it's been going it's been going uh at a pace that has been much faster than we were anticipating um but the cool thing is like we the opportunities that have sprung from that has uh, have been um, uh, many of them like some not something that we could foresee in terms of like where you where you guys are going to see one of these cabinets like near you um, very soon. So that's that's really cool. I like that. 
I like that. Well, can you guys, uh, can you throw the link up there again, good Paul, so that people know where to uh, where to go? Look at that. That's that's nice. We need to make that look nicer. That's kind of a, kind of like, oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. We got the confetti. That was exactly perfect. the contrast needed. Um, perfect. Um, it is it is creeping up on three in the morning here, guys. I'm gonna hop off here pretty soon, and but I just wanted to thank all of you for coming in and listening, and uh, Johnny and Neff for being here and being part of this. Is there anything that you would like to say to everyone before we uh, we wrap it up? Um, if you'd like to be involved at this point, you know, and and purchase a Valley Node, that'd be the um, the first way to get into the system, like directly. Um, you can also play Flutter for free right now. That's that's another great way. Um, yeah, we'll see you at the arcade. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. And uh, this has been Jason Bitbender Brink with LFG and Johnny at the Valley Ecosystem. We will catch you guys on the flip side. Peace out. Guys. Awesome, guys. Thank you so Bye. much. I'm going to go crash out because it is almost 3 a.m. and I will catch up with you guys soon. Thanks for making that work, Jason. Get some rest. No problem, guys. Sorry I wasn't able to be on camera.